Yes. So we have Suresh Fakugaru, like, uh, um, like who's going to present this one uh, today's session. Uh, he he's he's also a financial professional. Uh, he has financial services. As part of the financial services, he he also um, actually like uh, provide uh, information regarding like the college funding planning too. So we thought like okay we can invite him uh, to do the presentation like on regarding the college funding options. But not only that, like he has uh, uh, he has uh, two sons like who already went through the college phase. Um, so one like eldest one like went to the Purdue University, and the other one is also in the college. So he 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 also went he also applied like the FAFSA application, and uh, because he gained like more experience like uh, how to submit the FAFSA application, he learned uh, things like along the way, and he came forward to share all his experiences with us, which is definitely um, great, uh, Suresh Garu, to have you here because this is what like uh, the intent of these programs are. Um, the lessons that we have learned as a parent, like guiding our students, we want to impart to all the families here. Thank you, Suresh Garu. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Suresh Garu. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, would you please uh, allow me to share the screen? Okay, yeah. Okay. Let me know if you can. Yeah, I can see it. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, my name is Suresh Kakwandi. Um, uh, so in the US, right, um, it's it's a sticker shocker when we uh, when our kids get get uh, getting closer to the college. Uh, it's it's a lot of expenses in this country. Uh, back in India, right, it's the other way around. Nowadays, uh, from kindergarten to 12th grade, it's um, kind of very expensive. And in the college, it, it's uh, cheaper. But whereas here, it's the other way around. So most of the kids go to public schools here. So it's funded by our uh, property taxes and uh, sales taxes, stuff like that. So it's essentially $0 for us until 12th grade. But um, but in the when it comes to college, it's very very expensive. Um, so especially being coming from uh, India, um, it would be a sticker shocker if we if we, if we don't aware of it. So some of us uh, we learn the hard way. So I, I want to share my own experiences that I learned along the way. Um, so and thank you so much for Apmiya for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, like a student financial aid and how to apply for the FAFSA and what are the other college funding options. Um, so the agenda is like uh, the, the cost of college over the time and how to pay for a college, right? So the pay for the college includes like a tuition, books, room and board. So this, these are just approximate numbers. See, in 1980, it used to cost about $10,000 per year, so which is about uh, $40,000 for a four-year degree. And uh, whereas in uh, 2022, it is about $30,000 per year, so which is about 120K. Uh, so that's an increase of uh, $200,000 or 200%. Um, so these are the current uh, costs of the college. Again, these are just approximate, not a uh, ball uh, the, up to the, uh, the exact number, just a ballpark. Uh, so right now, if you want to, um, so there are a couple of options, right, to go to the colleges. One is the in-state. So the kids get qualified the in-state if they live at least one year uh, in that uh, state. Uh, so right now they're paying around thirty thousand dollars per year. So my own experience, right? We live in Dallas, Texas. So my son goes to in-state this year. So it's co it costs about $30,000 per year. So which is about 120K for the four-year uh, college. 
And uh, if you want to go to out of state schools, uh, so let's say because I'm a Texas State resident, my older, uh, the older son, he went to Purdue University in Indianapolis, Indiana State, right? So it costed us about $45,000. So uh, uh, it could cost anywhere from $45,000 to $60,000 per year, based on the, depending on the college. Uh, Purdue was a little cheaper because they froze the tuition fees for almost eight years. Uh, but normally it could it would cost about sixty thousand dollars if you want to send them to out of state schools, and then of course we want to send to private schools like MIT, Harvard, and Stanford like that. It could cost around eighty five thousand dollars per year, so that's about uh, three forty k for four years. Like you even just to send for the in state, right? It would cost to one twenty thousand if you don't plan in advance. Then it's it's a kind of a um, shocking uh, when, when we get to that point. Suresh Garu, like I'll, yeah. I'll, I just want you to pause on that one. Yeah. So I, I wanted you to also explain like like why room and board also is considered under this one. Um, because most of the students uh, live uh, in the dorms, right? Um, so that's why the, the room and board expenses also we need to plan for. Okay, so another thing that I would like to add here is like some of the, so yes, like so if the student is like out of state or maybe like in, same in, in state, but like away from home, um, they have to obviously take a room and, and stay um, to continue the or to uh, during the school year. But most of the colleges, they mandate the room and board. Uh, they mandate like staying at the dorm at the college. Like for example, Princeton, Princeton. Uh, if you are studying at Princeton, you have to stay at the Princeton dorm for three years. Northwestern, you have to stay for two years. Johns Hopkins, you have to stay there for two years. So that's a um, college mandate. So you don't have a say, like, uh, so you, you just have to send the kid and so that is like definitely the cost that you the dom costs are like usually different from the room cost like if you are renting a room outside uh, but then because of this mandatory restriction by imposed by some of these colleges it's you just have to yeah you just have to uh, go to the you just have to stay at the dom so I just want like the parents to understand. And when uh, on this slide, like the private schools, when, when he mentioned private schools, it's just not only private schools, it, all the uh, top schools like Ivy League schools or also like, yes, like that is that is the, the cost roughly the parent would have to go through. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Sonia. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, some, some schools do mandate that the kids have to stay uh, stay in the even though you're in the same town, uh, the kids have to stay in the dorm. So, so it's always better to uh, plan for a little bit extra. I mean, if you don't need to use it, that's good. But uh, other way around is always a disaster, right? So that's why it's always better to plan um, more than what we need. Okay. Um, so and then other thing is say every college uh, has their own once you once you um, shortlist the college that you are uh, planning to apply so it's always better to go to their college website each and every college has their own financial uh, uh, aid office like for example i just listed a couple of them here so i'll just walk through the like for example, this one, right? In the Purdue University. So these were all the freshman uh, scholarships that are available. I, I'm going to paste all these links in the chat so you can uh, copy, uh, save it. Uh, but so in essence, so this is the like uh, their financial aid um, uh, the website. <clears throat> so everyone has a deadline also. Like for example, if you want to apply for the, the trustee scholarship, number first is the deadline and um, the presidential college number first is the deadline so and so forth it has very um, wealth of information so once you finalize the list of colleges that you're planning to apply please do the research on their financial website uh, and and also uh, they do conduct the webinars um, so uh, please talk to them 
um, they will they can post the let you know the dates that they're conducting the webinar stuff like that. So this is the like a Purdue University, and also the UT Austin has something called Forty Acres uh, Scholarship, right? So if the, if the kids qualify for this one, it's kind of a full ride. So a lot of, if you see many of our, uh, our people also qualify like Indians. So uh, once you get qualified, this everything is paid like a, a tuition, room, board. Sometimes even get they get a pocket money also. Um, so so please be aware of it. Uh, this is the MIT website. So like I said, every uh, you just need to Google it and then you'll find uh, the financial aid uh, website for that particular uh, college. And uh, so as far as the scholarships concerned, there are two types of uh, scholarships. So one is a, a merit-based scholarship and then the other one is the need-based scholarship. So uh, these are the, some of the merit-based uh, scholarships that are available. Um, so in 11th grade, um, they can write uh, PSAT. So when they qualify and then um, becomes the finalist in that uh, National Merit Scholarship, so any college they go to, they get $2,500. It's not only that, once you qualify for this uh, National Merit Scholarship, Many colleges, uh, um, include a lot of colleges in Dallas also, they give the full right. So, which means you don't have to pay anything from the pocket. So many people think, oh, just for $2,500, we don't need to go through that much hassle. It's, it's, it's not only that, it, many colleges offer full right. So please be aware of that. Um, I think we already looked at uh, also this one, right? In the some of the colleges have their own scholarships. Uh, like with the merit-based, uh, UT Austin has a 40 acres and uh, in the UT Dallas, it's called AES. Um, also, uh, I did not know this before my son went to college. Many companies that we work for, right, they offer the scholarship for the employee's children. So it could be 5,000 or 10% of the tuition, 20% of the tuition. It all depends on the company. So please check with your employer also. Also, uh, there are the institutional grants, um, uh, like uh, mostly it's funded by the alumni. Sometimes the, you won't believe the private colleges or Ivy League colleges could cost same as the in-state fees because of the institutional grants. So uh, please, uh, so don't hesitate to apply for the, the Ivy League schools. Uh, the kid is qualified. Um, some of the schools, they have something called 100% need-based. So if you're not able to afford the college and if the kid is qualified, they will come up with the, uh, the funding. Uh, and the next comes to the need-based scholarship which is uh, provided by the US Department of Education, also called uh, commonly known as FAFSA. So this FAFSA, uh, it's uh, opened on October 1st. So uh, I urge you to apply as soon as possible because the funds are first come and first serve. And uh, there are like uh, four types of uh, funds that are available from FAFSA. So the first one is uh, the federal grants. Uh, so if once you get a grant, we don't need to pay back, right? So that's that's a good thing. And the next one is a subsidized loans. So these are uh, interest-free loans while in the college. Um, so we never know, right, how the, um, the government uh, uh, surprises us. So right now they're waiving loans up to $20,000. So for example, personally, we took the, some interest-free loans, um, um, so we could potentially um, don't need to pay pay back up to uh, ten thousand dollars in my case. Okay, uh, so a lot of people think, oh, we are like high-income earners; we may not qualify. We never know. It only takes about thirty minutes to one hour to apply for uh, this application. Um, so we always should give it a shot. 
even I thought, yeah, we may not be qualified, but uh, we, we were qualified for uh, interest free loan. So if you have any questions anytime, um, uh, I'll be happy to assist. Um, the next one is a work study programs, right? So in this one, uh, once you qualify, the college pays up with the uh, off on or off campus jobs. Um, so, so, so the student can help pay for the college. So it not only helps the financially, but also it kind of creates the responsibility on the kid. See, most of us, right, we, our, our parents funded our college. We never had to work. And it was a different culture back home. But here, uh, it, it's always better to for give them the responsibility also so that uh, they know the value of it. And the next one is the non-subsidized loan. So this loan is also from a federal government, but uh, the interest is accrued from the day we take the loan. Okay. Uh, and then the other one is uh, most of the colleges also offer the payment plans. So you don't need to pay uh, everything upfront. You can pay uh, in installments. Okay, so so far uh, we discussed about the med-based and uh, need-based scholarship. Let's say if you're not eligible for all of that. So how do you plan early? Um, um, so that we can be prepared for that 120K in the um, in-state and uh, 240K in out-of-state, so on and so forth. Um, and again, be, please be cognizant uh, because of the inflation and the cost of the tuition going up. That is the current um, cost. So let's say if your kid is only in the elementary school right now and there's another 10 years to um, kids to go to college, so you could uh, you could imagine uh, uh, it will be much more than what what I have shown in the slide. So we need to plan for that, right? So there are a couple of ways we can plan. So one is the 529 college savings account. So um, in this one, basically we will uh, we pay the post tax money. Um, I will explain in the next slide uh, what are the pros and cons. So the 529 college and also the prepay for the college credits. See, some states offer the, you can buy the college credit now. So let's say my son is, my kid is in second grade right now, for example. So you will go to college in 10 years from now. You can pay for that credit, future credit in the current price. So you can lock in the rate. I mean, there are also pros and cons about that. Um, I will explain in, in a bit. And then some people also invest in the Roth IRA. So if you if you are eligible, you can contribute into Roth IRA, so that uh, the, everything grows tax free uh, or tax deferred. And at the end of the um, after five years, you can whatever you invested, you can take out the money uh, without paying any penalties or taxes. Even even for the growth, you can take out the money tax free. Uh, sorry, penalty free. You don't need to pay any 10% penalty if you show it is for the education purpose. Of course, the growth becomes a, um, uh, ordinary income tax, but you don't need to pay penalty on the growth. And uh, some people also use this strategy. So they buy a property, like investment property. So over the time, because of the inflation and everything, uh, property appreciation, um, let's say if we buy like a $200,000 or 250k property, um, then uh, uh, you, you may be doing the down payment of 50,000. So in the 10, 15 years time frame, so that could uh, pay for. Uh, you can just sell that house and uh, pay for the uh, college. And some people also use the stock market investment to grow the money. And another option is the cash value life insurance, where you can buy the life insurance policy, pay for it. And then uh, you can also uh, pay for the college. And so these are the 529 uh, plan uh, pros and cons that I could think of. So the pros is the money grows tax deferred and can be used for college expenses, tax free. All the growth is tax free. And uh, on top of that, some states also offer the tax deduction on the contribution. Uh, in Texas, we don't have it because we don't, we, we don't pay income tax, but some states where you pay the income tax offer the tax deduction. 
and no contribution limits also. Like um, uh, I've seen one of my client, he contributed about 240K uh, into the, um, the 529 plan. So there's no contribution limits. But the cons of this one is, if not used for the college expenses, you have to pay 10% penalty and ordinary income tax on the earnings. So that is the cons. So if you have two kids, uh, um, yeah, let's let for first one is got a full ride or scholarship, or they did not go to college. So you can always use for the other kid. But if you don't use for the both of them, then you may have to pay 10% penalty and the ordinary income tax on the growth. Um, and also it, the contributions from this into this plan, it work, works against the federal financial aid. So because in the FAFSA form, right, we need to mention how much we saved up for the college. Um, so depending on the depending on that, the, they will determine what is our estimated uh, family contribution. And then um, that may um, work against getting the financial aid. And of course, the 529 plan, they're, they're directly invested in the stock market. Uh, you know how it is going right now, right? So the, the guy that I said, uh, he invested 250K in uh, the 529. He said his account is 150K now. So, so there's no downside or protection on that. It all depends on the how stock market performs and per fund performance. Okay, so now comes back to the FAFSA form, right? So it opens on October 1st. And uh, uh, also, please remember, we need to fill this form every year. Um, every year uh, uh, when the college in the uh, the kid in the college, and the funds are first come first serve. Uh, and also, uh, for this one, the deadline is about the following year, uh, June thirtieth. But the colleges have their own uh, deadlines to submit. So please look out uh, those dates. Uh, submit as early as possible. Right? So, I mean, we have the tendency to delay, right? Uh, but, but my recommendation is to um, fill it as soon as possible because it doesn't take uh, much time. And the things that you need to include in the FAFSA form, you need to include the salary of the um, kid if they're earning any, and also the parents, um, and also uh, any bank balances that we have brokerage account, any 529 plan, um, anything that we saved up for the college. So you don't need to include the following. Um, don't need to mention the retirement accounts. You don't need to mention the primary home that you're living in, even though if it's paid off, you don't need to mention that. And then also you don't need to mention the cash value life insurance policy. Um, so these are the some of the websites that uh, I could uh, uh, think of let me just uh, paste I i'll paste this uh, in the chat before that let me show you how to fill that uh, fast for form and you can use my own example as a way for so Nigar, can you hear this video yeah we we, we are able to oh, hear so let's get into it Go to Google, type in FAFSA, and it should be the first thing that pops up. And you're going to go new the FAFSA process, start here, say, I am the student. Now you're going to have to create your FAFSA ID, which will be used throughout the entirety of this process. Select it, start as you need, putting your name, your date of birth, your social security number, which is really important. Create a username, password, putting your email address. Where do you live, as well as a phone number, putting your communication preference, whether it is by email or text message as well as the language that you speak and read. Confirm, verify, create some challenge questions so you can recover the account if you forget your password. Verify your phone number and your email address. Now, that's gonna take a couple of days to be processed. Now coming back in, you're gonna say, hey, I'm a returning user. And now we're actually gonna go through the process of filling out the FAFSA itself. You're gonna to have to create a save key, which will be used every time you come back and reattack the FAFSA. Moving forward, you're going to be re-entering some of the same information you did the first time to be able to actually apply for the FAFSA. It's going to be your name, date of birth, social security number, email address, what's your actual address that you live at, um, how long have you lived there. If it's been less than five years, you're going to have to indicate your previous residence as well as whether or not you are a U.S. citizen. What's your high school graduation status as well as the highest level of education you completed. 
male or female. If you are male, you are required to register with the Selective Service, also known as the draft. Driver's license number, as well as what state you're in. Are you in the foster care system? What is the education level of your parent or parents? Have you ever received federal student aid previously? Uh, what is the high school you're at or did you graduate from? Where are you trying to go to school? You can enter up to 30 schools or universities. Select whether you're going to be living on campus or off campus. What's your marital status? Most of you, this is going to be single, which makes it pretty easy. When you got married, if that's applicable, if you have any children that you are responsible for, hopefully for most of you being in high school, the answer is no to both of these. How many people in your household are in college? Um, most of you being in high school, you will have to answer questions about your parents. Uh, this is a useful tool. The IRS data import to be used to pull the previous information from the tax return of the previous year into the FAFSA, which fills out a bunch of blanks already. Transfer that, get your parents to help out in terms of the actual information from the tax return. Then you'll have to enter how much money is being earned by your household. Um, make sure a lot of the stuff, as it says, is transferred if you did use that data tool. Now you're going to have other income amounts that are non-taxable, think alimony or child support, how much money are you re receiving through those avenues. As last element, what is your net worth, checking, savings account, investments. And then are you prepared? Most of you know, review all your demographics, make sure everything's correct. Now you're going to move on to next. Read everything first. Never sign something without reading it. Click agree. Move on. Sign it. Now you're going to just submit your FAFSA. It's going to take three to five business days. And then you're actually going to get your SAR, which is what you have right here. This is mine. I'm ineligible for any aid. Hopefully when you get yours back, you are actually eligible. But it's going to give you different options in terms of Pell Grants, as well as what loans. But please stay away from the loans. Make sure you're only following the scholarships and the Pell Grants that are available to you, as well as work-study programs. So, so, uh, so that's how you can. It's, it's very simple. It takes about 30 minutes to an hour uh, to fill everything. Um, and some people ask me, like, uh, what is the eligibility criteria, right? Um, so uh, I'm also going to paste this this link, uh, but this is the eligibility criteria to demonstrate the financial need and must be a citizen or at least a um, eligible non-citizen. So um, um, so there's a list of uh, eligible to non-citizen, like a refugee, at least a green card holder, stuff like that. Um, and um, what else? Um, so there is a common term that's called uh, estimated family, uh, sorry, expected family um, contribution. So this is the, they determine based on the, um, the data that we entered into the FAFSA form. Um, so, and also they look at the cost of the college that we are planning to attend. Uh, they, they, uh, and then with the, for the difference, they will uh, try to help us. Okay. And, um, So I pasted all the these uh, uh, links in the in the chart. Okay. Any questions that I could answer? Uh, yes, Sandy. This is this is like an excellent session. Like you just uh, went through like each and every. Week. Uh, option that is available for a student like or for the parent to support their students uh, this is definitely a great session I, I do see a few questions in the chat so let me just go over those questions first before we open open this uh, for everyone okay sounds good thank you Yeah, so there's one question from Venkatgaru, I believe. Uh, he said, like, some private schools provide aid and scholarships. 
um again like so that is i think like uh suresh garu like you probably might have covered that but do you just want to go over it briefly yes yes definitely so most of the uh, private schools right especially the private schools because the cost is so high uh, they have the different kind of scholarship like uh, obviously the fafsa the federal aid and also the grant is right so the grants are like say it is costing 300000 dollars right most of the people get around 200000 to 220k as a grant if they're qualified also uh, um, especially the private schools they have this 100% uh, um, let's see so it's called uh, 100% uh, meet 100% financial need so so once the kid is qualified they will come up with the plan how to fund for the college so that's why please please don't apply to apply for the the ivy league schools uh, the kid is uh, qualified because the funding you can always figure it out does it answer the question yeah. uh, i mean fafsa lo eligibility ledo anukunte kuda ee financial aid ostundi andi avunandi yes and correct okay this is specific to the college yes specific to the college that you, that you're applying like how mm-hmm. how he was showing right uh, like on 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 like very like for a particular school like can you suresh kar can you go back to that 40 whatever uh, 40. Ownership, mm-hmm. like the, the site that you have the sixth, the third tab yeah so this one is uh, 40 acres scholars program is specific to that college like even in maryland like when uh, i have seen uh, maryland colleges have a specific uh, scholar scholars program similar to this and if you qualify or uh, you just have to apply and there's a selection criteria like if you if you qualify in that one they offer a full ride or like maybe certain percent of the uh, certain percent of your college funds so whatever the college is because there's 3000 colleges out there like we probably won't be able to cover each and every college whatever the college is that the particular student is applying like make sure like uh, get familiarized with with their website school website so you can you can find that information very quickly correct yeah so if the kid is in 12th grade now this is the time to do all that research so is that we apply once we get into admission into that particular college and do that application process a uh, correct it all depends on some colleges you have to you don't need to apply like for example ut austin right you don't need to apply it's automatically um, gets into that process some colleges you have to apply uh, separately uh, like for example when i showed the purdue university right so mm-hmm. you have to apply for the trustee scholarship and the deadline is november 1st so most of the colleges uh, they may have to write an essay um provide the credentials and uh, stuff like that um yeah so it all depends on the college that's why it's highly encouraged uh, to attend their financial aid uh, webinars uh, also um, look at to their uh, financial aid website okay so these scholarships are not dependent on the parent income these are for the student the gpa and the, those is, essays okay that, that's yeah we we can say these as the merit scholarships like some like uh, uh, i mean like in in my case like my daughter got like a merit scholarship and then some of the colleges they do give like additional merit scholarship like so so my daughter got qualified for the additional merit scholarship too so it's up to the colleges like how much funds that they have they they try to have like programs um depending like depending on the funds available at that college correct yeah so most of these uh, especially private colleges right so the alumni that gets rich after studying their college and then open a company i mean they made so they they do want to give back to the their college right so so they fund uh, this kind of a uh, programs like a grant which which you don't need to pay back so that is the beauty 
So to that one, like I would like to add, so usually some of the parents, like when they, or the students, when they do the research, like they look for like the colleges, they also consider this factor, right? They look for the colleges who has like strong alumni factor. So the strong alumni base. So that, that also you would know. And because like, because if they have a very good, strong, like alumni base, they get like more funds. Correct. <clears throat> Does it answer your question, Venkatkar? Yeah, thank you. And one more question, sorry to ask. Say, yeah. for example, if I got admission into one public school and one private expensive school. Okay. So based on the financial aid, if I can go to the, say, for example, public school, local is a free kind of thing. I mean, okay. some, somewhat. Okay. But private is very expensive. Okay. So is, do colleges give enough time for us to decide our admission based on or how it was say for example if i apply for the scholarship yeah can i how soon i will get to know like you know say for example if it takes like one week two weeks three weeks so can i able to change my decision if i don't get the scholarship yes 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 definitely you, you can um, you, they will give you ample time to um, do that and not only that you can also especially with the private schools you can negotiate so let us say you apply for two colleges and one you got a more aid than the other college. So you can politely ask them, hey, I, I got uh, this much aid from this college, but I like your college. Um, but the only factor that I cannot, uh, I'm inclined towards the other colleges because I got more aid. So these guys may bump up their offer too. Thank you. Yeah. There is one exception, unless unless when you're applying for a college and you specified the, and you said that like, this is the college that I want to go with early decision option, then you don't have much choices. You have to go with the same college. Uh, so early decision, you you have locked in, right? Like you have to yeah, have a contract. Yeah, but that's only one college uh, for the early decision, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you selected that college, like even though like the student got like uh, other colleges and like maybe full ride and all, they can they still cannot do it. So that is so that's why like you have to plan your strategy when applying for these colleges. So early decision is a binding option. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, um, Sonika. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Suresh Garu. Good morning, Andy. Thank you for the uh, wonderful session. Uh, can you also talk about the CSS profile? Like, how is that different from FAFSA or the mutually exclusive? Uh, any insights into it, please? Uh, sure, and yeah. CSS profile you apply in the uh, College Board um, um, website. So uh, the FAFSA is more of a um, need based. Uh, this, uh, most of these colleges, right, uh, the, especially the private colleges, they look at the CSS profile to award the grant. So that you apply in the College Board website. And, and uh, uh, you know, again, a green card is uh, only applicable or eligible to everybody? How does that work? Uh, I believe you have to have the green card. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure on the private colleges, but I believe you need to have the green card. Okay, thank you. Look. Okay, let's take the next question here. Uh, Prashant, uh, Prashant Garu asked that like to be considered as in state, how many years of prior education is required? Does it vary per state? I heard Michigan, it's five years. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about other state, but in Texas, it's one year, only one year of residency. If you're there, um, you're eligible. Yeah, that is what like I I know too. So some some it, it, I I guess like it depends on on the state. So if you are like a resident for one year, like in a particular state, like you are considered a resident of that state. But uh, so if yeah, it's it all depends on the, yeah college. State so, base, yeah. Yeah, we need to check. With, you need to check with the respective college that you're applying. Uh, to make sure. And some states, right, also the resident status uh, changes after the student living for one year. Um, I think in Texas, it's it's a little bit lenient in that way. But uh, my son went to Purdue, right? Um, they did not allow that. We had to pay out-of-state uh, uh, fees all four years. So it all depends on the college. Okay. 
So I'll take the next question from the chat. So Rashi Kagaru asked, like, so as you mentioned during the call, Suresh Garu, like about the 10,000 wave, uh, uh, wave word that you got, like on the student loan. So he was saying that, like, is that like 10,000 wave student loans is only federal aid on the federal aid loans or any other private loans like Discover Financial? Oh, it's only federal aid, Andy. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think like the Biden, like Joe Biden, like uh, went over this one, right? He's he introduced this program and and uh, he said like he would forgive like some of the student loans. But uh, so Suresh Garu, so when 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 that program was introduced by Joe Biden, yeah. so is that like a student loan forgiveness? Like is like is there a date like or is the year like um, that the loan taken by yeah. so and so year? Correct, correct. There is eligibility criteria where the student have to be um, in, in college the last year also. Uh, and also, yeah, there is some eligibility criteria. Yeah, so I just want the parents to be mindful. It's not an ongoing, it may not be an ongoing program. It's yeah, uh, yeah just a one time. This is just a one time. Yeah. But we never know, right? So when I applied, when we got the interest free loan back then, um we, we were planning to pay back but now <laughs> all of a sudden they announced that, uh, that they're going to forgive so we never know so it's, it's better to anyway we don't need to pay any interest while in the college right so why not take the advantage yeah so you just have to be mindful that it's 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 some options like the this was a new new program that uh forgiveness program that joe biden um uh, introduced so that is what that 10,000 waiver is Correct. now there's another question so you mentioned that uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to enter like or and or furnish like the details about uh, the primary home Correct. Um, on the FAFSA right yeah. uh, you don't have to include like the retirement accounts or the primary home like any equity on the primary home how about the investment properties like if the, if the parents have investment properties like do they have to mention that too um most likely yes i mean again i'm not a cpa most likely yes as uh, but if you have not filed the taxes using the capital gains or anything like that uh, in the prior year then you probably quote unquote you meant it, don't okay. need to, yeah you know what i mean so yeah. because they look at the um the the tax returns of the prior year so based on that they, they'll find out uh, if you're uh, missing anything see for example like uh, so the bank balance is also a criteria for them to validate yes so but, but, you, yeah say but, for example if your salary is less this year yeah. But still, you have this five, some bank accounts and some shares. Yeah. Will that impact the decision making? Oh, yes, it does. It does. So it's not only the salary, it's all, all your financial yeah. and the situation. Yeah. They look at the overall financial situation. But the good thing is, like, if you have the huge bank balance, uh, if you have not paid the interest the prior year, um, you can say you have a less amount of bank. So, so they don't, so they don't Can, look at the they don't look at the bank balance. They don't verify that. They will verify only the tax returns. Let's say, for example, last year when you file uh, file the tax returns, you showed that you accrued like a five thousand dollars interest, for example, like a CDs or something like that, right? So then that's a red flag. Uh, if, if you don't mention that the bank balance when you apply for this year. If we did not get any um, thing at all, or no interest at all in under hundred thousand dollars, then you may not you may not need to include that in the fast form. Oh, only the interest. Yeah, that's what they verify. They the, we need to submit our tax returns when we apply for FAFSA. Okay. Usually, they verify based on your uh, social security number, Andy. Like whatever the accounts that are that connected with you they can like irs can get to it right so that's how like they verify your tax returns also to see whether you have for 
you have uh, submitted all your uh, documents on that, right? So same thing goes here, like when you are applying for the federal aid, they connect your IRS, like the tax return information with, with, this, with this form. Uh, Ma'am, just as you mentioned, uh, they verify something that has a connection with SSN, right? Nowadays, uh, any tax filing we do in our home country, India, there also we have to mention SSN because of some uh, tax treaty things uh, between US and India. So do you think anything, they go to that level of connecting Indian bank accounts as well? They probably may not, but then like, uh, but then if you have that foreign um, I, I forgot like the form number, but the, if you are applying that, like that's what they wanted to look at, right? Like when they, this is federal federal aid and they are giving the money out for free, right? So they just wanted to make sure that like, yes, like if the student is, student can be supported by the parents, like they don't want to. So they they may or may not, but I, I don't want to mislead on this call. Like we can find out more information on that particular one. Correct, correct. So on top of topic of India, right? I just uh, remembered. So um, um, we can all the grandparents they can also pay for the college from India. Um, they can directly white transfer the money from their account to the college account here. So that's a great. Uh, so I did that in my case. That's a good point there. And uh, so the. So regarding, uh, yeah, so the investment property, like so you're saying that like whatever there that are in the tax returns, probably you may want to list them out here. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, are H4 students with no SSN eligible for FAFSA? Mm, unfortunately, uh, no. Okay. Uh, so all these links that uh, Suresh Garu shared like during uh, during this presentation, like we'll try to add uh, or like share those on the WhatsApp and other groups as well. Uh, please do, um, please do like make sure like you can go over those. And the video that uh, um, Suresh Garu showed like how the tax, uh, how the FAFSA file uh, form can be filed. So we'll share that as well. Uh, is EFC part, uh, Srinivas, Srinivas Garu asked this question, is EFC part of state contribution or federal? Also, is the eligibility criteria same as FAFSA? So EFC is basically, uh, uh, are they asking about the... Yeah, EFC is just a factor. Yeah. EFC. A, yeah, correct, yeah. So there is a, I, I also posted this link. So this is what the criteria they use to find out the um, expected family contribution. So this is this is just a formula, uh, Srinivaskar. Like EFC yep. is a formula. Like uh, based on this formula, that's how they determine. But uh, so what I think like what he is asking is, is that the same formula that they use for the st state as well? Yeah, it's a, it's the same thing. Yes, correct. Okay. For uh, Jay Prakash Garu asked this question, for kids on H4, are they eligible for all types of student aid, uh, same as the citizen student? Are there any aids that are not eligible? From which grade should we start applying for FAFSA? Oh, no, FAFSA, you apply um, the, uh, when, when you're about to apply for college and also all the four years while we're in the college. Let's say for example, for 2022, 20, uh, I mean, 2023, 2024 academic year, you would apply now. So that means like the, the student has to be in the 12th grade and applying Correct. for the colleges for the next year, right? Correct. They are they are still doing the 12th grade. Uh, they are in the October uh, 12th grade. Uh, so, and they are applying for the colleges for the, for them to go to the colleges, like the starting like the August of next year. So you use like the previous year. So right now, 
this is the 2023-24 is the first year the, the student would be going to the college. So you use the 2021 tax returns uh, uh, and enter that information. Again, it, this is really important for you to apply every year because like I think like Venkat Garu or somebody just asked like, oh, there, if there is a change in salary. So that is that is the point. So because if there is a change, there is a change like in the salary, like probably you would be qualified like for, for the FAFSA uh, for that year. So please do apply like every year starting uh, starting the, the kid in the 12th year, 12th grade. Yeah, from an eligibility standpoint, uh, only GC holders and citizens are eligible. Or is there any other additional category with XYZ conditions also eligible? Because oh, yeah. the past two years, there are a lot of applications. I mean, specific to green card has been moved, and still a lot of them are stuck with uh, EAD and adjustment for processing. Correct, Andy. So I, I also pasted this link in the our chat. So this is the basic eligibility criteria. Uh, so we need to demonstrate financial need uh, and also be, be a US citizen or any eligible non-citizen, right? So if we click on that, it will list all the uh, non-eligible uh, non-US citizens. Okay, thank you. I mean, to be short, like uh, sorry, if we apply, basically Indians we apply. We are not belongs to any of these special categories. Correct. Uh, some of the T1 visa, which are Canada based, to, and uh, there were some islands, uh, all eligible out there. Particularly the Indian H1, H4 key eligibility. Rondo, the end of the day, a risk, my friend recent. Safra, I don't know whether it's meaningful to tell here. So the problem is he was. Kind of same, like a green card to end stage loan. Be, uh, sorry, sorry, whatever it is, he's in the end stage of the green card. His son is in the fourth year, just finished uh, 21 years or 18 years, something like 21 years. So they forced him to convert from dependent to student visas. That's when that's the option, only he has to continue his education. Adi Kunchum Riskun, we miru, and a Mirini questions are Utuna Gat Chaptuna. The other way of doing it, the maybe precautionary work is get some the T1 visa from Canada if possible. That can save. Yeah, that is that is true, Andy. Like there, there is a dependent age limit on a green card uh, qualification. And if you pass, like if the kid, uh, past that age while you are waiting for while a parent is waiting for the green card to come uh, then then like yes like I have seen like the students uh, taking up like the f1 visa because they don't qualify they don't qualify or they won't be eligible to be a student yeah and the came and popped with three months ago he was expecting then the dates moved blah 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 and finally like they have undergone this problem. True, true. Uh, but um, yeah, so that, yes, that is that is also the case. Like the 21 years is the one uh, that we may have to look for. So probably they would still be eligible for the merit scholarships or any other like the student aids that they get like after joining the campus. Uh, but uh, they may not be eligible for the federal aid. So you can, like, if you, if you, I mean, like, so all the colleges, like, they do have these sessions. They have these sessions. Uh, they, um, I think, like, they usually conduct, like, uh, three or four sessions every year, like, during this time. Um, so that like the the parents like can join and understand like what the FAFSA means, how to apply. So the financial aid team, like at that uh, admissions team or like financial aid, like who's managing the financial aid at that college, like has a lot of the resources. You can directly check with them. And if you still have any doubt, like you can just simply submit it. I mean, it's a free application, right? So exactly. It's yeah. <laughs> free application, submit it. If you get qualified, you got qualified, you yes. know? So, exactly. It doesn't hurt. 
yeah it doesn't hurt like i would i would go with that one right just simply apply uh, and and try your options yeah it's so even in my personal case right i mean i never thought i would qualify but so you never know so just apply and see it doesn't cost anything it takes one hour of your time yeah, yeah. On, on the same note suresh uh, why do they allow the parents to apply for a fafsa application i've seen like you know I, are you a student who is applying for application or a parent but why is that the parent right open at all uh, the the reason is uh, um, since they're uh, still the dependent on the parents um, we have to show our uh, tax returns as a parent if the student is if the student can support themselves uh, there's like there's a factor there like i think like they if they are if they don't consider or if they are not considered as a dependent on the parents tax return that means like they are able to support themselves like 50% of the costs or some factor like that yeah. if, if they are not dependent on the uh, on if they are not dependent on the parent then they I mean, like you don't have to punish any of the parent details. It's just the student details. Yeah. They can just uh, submit it, and and that that factor would be a lot different. But the student student should not be considered as a dependent on on the parent. Yeah, it it it's very hard to qualify that way though. I, I tried. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is the option. Well, Suresh Karun, parent apply to one type parent parent association you chail kada. How many the character? No, you, will still be, you will still be applying as a student, but you will be furnishing the parents' details when you are applying. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. SSN Undali and SSN Undali application law, if it is a must, if it's a required one, SS student ki student ki SSN Undali. If if like Akara uh, Adi, if you were not able to proceed further, then uh, then, like next level, loki If that oh, is the okay. uh, basic criteria, correct, but correct. the, the uh, intent is like so. When you are doing it, like, and if you are considered, if the student is considered as a dependent on the parent, parent details enter the Correct. If you look, if you look at this data, one of the step is this own determines if you need to provide the parental information, right? So, for example, were you born before um January twenty two thousand, right? So. So this itself disqualifies. So uh, this is for the next, this application is for the next academic year, 2023, 2024, right? So if they're born before 2000, that means they're already like 22 years old. So usually our kids get to college when they're 18 or 19 at the max, right? So uh, there is eligibility criteria, mm, but <laughs> it's very hard to qualify in that route. Oh, okay. I, so that means these are the for the day. Gap is going to be a different kind of student. Yeah, it could all look different counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of our kids may not qualify for this. May not qualify for it. They're the bound and pitching up. Yeah, that's why I tried that too. I like that. Legally, good. Pennsylvania last night. Pennsylvania law. Parents need not have to provide for the colleagues. Educate, need not have to provide. It's an option. Legally, they are not obligated to uh, provide uh, college education, fund for the college education. Whereas in New Jersey, it's the other way around. They have to, parents have the responsibility to provide for the college education. That's what the rule is by law. So uh, if that is the case in Pennsylvania state, they should not have, um, we, don't, we don't have to provide for the parents' information, right? <clears throat> If the kid decided to do that. Um, wow. Right, you can always, I mean, just to open the application and uh, try to um, show all those details. So yeah, it may be right and in a different state, but in Texas, it's uh, I can only speak for Texas. And so you can try that. That's why I'm saying, uh, that's what Sony and I was trying to emphasize. It doesn't <laughs> hurt, just apply. <laughs> no, no, will not call paper a fast start, eh? Uh, at least to ID undal and it uh, unta, it in unta, allow you to get the Yeah, correct. And because it could mm. the one of the first thing uh, that needs to happen is uh, this uh, SSN. Mm. SSN or real alien number. Oh, there itself, you call it disqualified people. 
ఇండిపెండెంట్ <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that means like they are they are able to support themselves like 50% of the cost it's only 50% but still like that costs are so high especially like if you got into ivy league school and if you are like 80 if you have to do like 80k right if you have to pay so that means the kid should be at, at least like 40k 40k plus right you should show there are kids that who make their own money right like they they probably may be making their own money and they at that time they can consider themselves as like uh, like not dependents and they can do this one yeah so sorry to ask one more question say for example first aid join avtar with you just uh, i'm sorry hypothetical situation first aid join in tarvata మనం నెక్స్ట్ ఇయర్ డిపెండెంట్ గా క్లెయిమ్ చేయకుండా ఇఫ్ హీస్ డూయింగ్ ఎనీ వర్క్ కెన్ హీస్ ఫైల్ చేయడానికి వాడికి ఏజ్ లిమిట్ ఏమైనా ఉంటుంది అండి లేదండి ఏజ్ లిమిట్ లేదు బట్ లైక్ షోయింగ్ దిస్ ఫామ్ రైట్ సో బిఫోర్ టూ థౌజండ్ అని ఇక్కడ బిఫోర్ టూ థౌజండ్ చూసారు ఇది సో దిడ్ ఈస్ ఆల్రెడీ ట్వంటీ టూ ఇయర్స్ ఓల్డ్ సో అక్కడ పోతుంది అనమాట akkada no way like what earning unna kuda i mean we can manage him to get some earning but we cannot change this this is the first step which will restrict <laughs> yeah yeah they, they they must have thought through all this and right <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a, it's yeah. almost similar to irs tax return the forms so any clauses like all the publications that we go through yeah. so all the rules that are there uh, so it's it's almost like similar because it's the it's the funds it's a free funds that the government is paying correct so 2000 no ante ink no ayipenattu na mottham qualify avaru kadandi like if you born before january like your son probably would not qualify for that right like so to after 2000 this is like before january 2000 yeah so so you pro- currently you probably like i mean your son would still be eligible yeah for this i mean basically it's like the age that if if you are like yeah, you know, age is what the data that, yeah that is what they are looking at ఇప్పుడు లెట్స్ ఏ ఎవ్రీబడి కెన్ మేక్ ద కిడ్ వర్క్ ఫర్ కపుల్ ఆఫ్ అవర్స్ ఎన్ సమ్ ఇన్కమ్ అండ్ దాస్ ఇన్ ద ఎయిటీన్ ఈ ఈ రూల్స్ లేకపోతే దెన్ ఎవ్రీబడి వుడ్ క్వాలిఫై కదండి సో దే వాంట్ టు అవాయిడ్ దట్ సో దే వాంట్ టు గివ్ టు ద ఫండ్స్ టు ద ఓన్లీ ద జెన్యున్ నీడ్ బేస్డ్ పీపుల్ ఓకే సో దట్ ఎయిట్ ఇయర్స్ స్టూడెంట్ అండి లైక్ ఎయిట్ ఇయర్స్ అంటే ఐ మీన్ లైక్ ఎయిట్ ఇయర్స్ అంటే ఇప్పుడు లైక్ మై డాటర్ స్టార్టెడ్ లాస్ట్ ఇయర్ రైట్ సో so tannu uh, uh, i mean like all the four years i pay work like this date would be like i think like this date would be mentioned in that way correct yeah and, so and that the, is my my daughter my daughter started last year like somebody might have started like two years back right in order to cover they are still in the they still might be in the college like maybe the kid born in like in the 2001 they still probably would be doing their undergraduate 
So that is what like how they did the four years of education. Exactly, exactly. And so this this year would change every year. So next year it would be two thousand one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the twenty twenty. Yeah, this fast form is twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four. Got you. I think at the end of the day, it looks like they're maintaining twenty two years age yeah. limit. Yes, yes, that's the that's the one. So I know like this is this is the most important topic and everybody like not just like who's applying for the FAFSA now, but everybody like wants to understand. So I'll just take like a few more questions. I'll just quickly go over these, um, even though like we are um, out of our time. So um, there is like another question, Suresh Garo, I think like you, uh, you asked like, do the college look at how much funding the kid has in the FI29 plan to provide financial aid? I, yes. think, I think like Suresh Garo covered this, like, do you so have any other follow-up yeah. questions? Yeah, unfortunately, when we plan well, <laughs> they won't give aid. <laughs> so because uh, yeah, now that in the FAFSA. Uh, Sonigar, is the floor open for open questions? Uh, can I ask one? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so uh, either of you could answer. So uh, when we are trying to understand the ingredients of what it makes this uh, college uh, uh, tuition fee, right? We are seeing something called the medical insurance. So typically we as parents, right? We do take the medical insurance for a family as a whole. So it, that medical insurance that they are talking inside the tuition fee, is that a mandatory thing or you can exclude that? Or what are your thoughts? No, Andy, that is for the applicable for mostly for the people that don't have the insurance. Like for let's example, like foreign students, right? They come by themselves. So it's for them. If the parents gotcha. are here, they're already covered under health, health insurance. Perfect. Yeah, if, Thank you, Suresh. So you, you just have to furnish the details. Like uh, for, for, in my case, like the... Uh, the university asked for the proof of the insurance. So as long as you are able to uh, provide the proof of the insurance, you don't have to go and pay that additional $3,000, $4,000. Perfect. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah. So the next one is from Hari Garu. What is uh, the advantage? Sonny Garu, just, to, just yeah. to add something to that medical insurance. Uh, sometimes what happens is some universities give very, very discounted insurance uh, premium rates for the students uh, With even lesser benefits. than what the, better than our group insurance. So what some people will do is even change and they put, take the college insurance. I mean, just yeah. I'm giving an idea. Yeah, that is that is definitely a good point, Andy. Yes, like, so you, uh, I would definitely advise the parents to evaluate the pros and cons. Like maybe the plan that you currently have uh, that is that is supporting the child's medical uh, policy. If it's not that great, like usually the student plans hub, um, may have covered like a lot more benefits. Then, then I mean, like evaluate how much premiums you are paying and then evaluate like how much money you are paying or you have to pay towards the medical policy uh, for the student. Look at that one and then take advantage. But that is definitely a good point. Yes, I agree to well, like Vinkaragaru. Like, um, so the other one is like, what is the advantage of grandparents paying from India? <laughs> I cannot answer that on the recorded line. Okay. Anyone so, Hari Garu, just like check with, like call. We don't want to record these uh, these ones. Yeah. Like, so just you can call, call me directly and I can explain. Yeah. Yeah, but on that same note, and in the Kumiranar, Suresh, 5 to 9, uh, it's not just for the kids. If, if let's say both the kids were unable to use the 5 to 9 funds, it seems one can transfer that to the grandkids also. This law of the land allows that. Yeah, you can, but you know, <laughs> don't want to plan like 30 years from now, right? I know, that's a long shot. Yeah, right. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, but you can you can give it to your uh, <clears throat> cousins or somebody, you know, anybody you can transfer actually those funds. I mean, you can, give, yeah, correct, Andy, but uh, yeah, you're right. You, you can give it to anybody. Yeah, if, you're, if you have somebody <laughs> coming from India, you can transfer to them if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have one question on 529 plans. Yeah. Once we climb that, should we show it in the IRS uh, tax filing somewhere? Or how does it? How does the taxation, which I know there are no taxes, but how do we show that? You know, accountant says there's no need to show anything. So 
I mean, if you pay from the 529 and yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, uh, yeah, again, I'm not CPA, yeah, if the accountant says no, yeah, probably you don't need to. Yeah, probably is right. The reason, right? So when we um, moved to, uh, in 2012, we moved back to India and eh? so for good. So during that time, we sold our primary home. And uh, since it was in that, uh, since we lived in the primary home for two years, and then uh, the, the capital gain was less than 500,000, we didn't put it in the uh, tax returns. So I think uh, your CPA is right. So probably if it is in that criteria, you don't need to mention. And one more thing, Devigar, like just to add. So when you are using 529, generally, most generally, the check will be issued to the college or to the no, student. No, no, no. I started, I opened in the New York State and those guys, are, I don't know, I called them. They said you know, they don't issue anything to the college. They said you pay from your account and they transferred me to my account. That's how, that's how it worked. So I know, you know, I was a little, little hesitant, but they said that's the way it only works. Wow. That's surprising. In Georgia, they, they are transferred to the university. Okay. Yeah. Uh, suppose uh, I'm from Connecticut and I'm working in Washington, Connecticut, and then if I want to use it in different states, so is it possible to do it? Yes. Or yes. Will you pay the tax? No, no, no. You, you can use it in it. I can use it for any yes. university. Any yes. that's okay. that's and, and question is not clear, Andy. Sorry? Let, maybe let me repeat the question. Andy. It's like his line was not clear. So his question was, if you open the 529 plan in one state, can you use those funds to uh, pay for the college in a different state? For example, he's from Connecticut. If you open 529, can he pay for the, the son, his kid go to Berkeley in California? Can you use the funds to pay for that? The answer is yes. You can pay in any state. And how about, yeah. the, how about the state tax reductions for that particular year? For example, I, I filed taxes in Connecticut. So will the New York, uh, like if I'm taking 529 in New York, will that be, I mean, I can use it in Connecticut as state uh, tax reductions? Yeah, so usually you pay the tax, you, you, you use the tax deductions when you contribute and right? Okay. So, anyway, so I think like his question, Sureshkar, his question is like he is still contributing, but he's his his student is not going to the not like using that state colleges, right? So he's he went they went out of that. Like can yeah, they yeah. can yes, he yes. still get like that uh, deductions yes. uh, or credits? Correct, correct. Okay. And, and one more question, uh, like, <clears throat> so we talked about a lot of FASA and other um, scholarship programs. So these are the federal related. Is yes. there anything else that we need to look for it, like uh, private organizations, like, like for example, if you take uh, Gates and Melinda funding, I mean, some, I mean, I'm just giving an example. I don't know whether they're doing it or not, but any other organizations, private organizations who provide oh, yes, scholarship? Sir, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of uh, things that um, corporations they provide. Like, for example, one of the uh, link that I pasted is the Coca-Cola one, right? So, okay. Coca-Cola Foundation, they also offer. Um, but ideally, Andy, like uh, if you go and like search for those ones, I think like they, they there are like so many sites, but I think like they two of them or like uh, even the schools uh, provide that information. There are tons of like uh, um, tons of uh, scholarships that are available for the students. Uh, but uh, but it's it's up to us like there it's up to us like you just submit yeah. it how many you can apply and then yeah everything need a essay to be written okay but there are there are options and there are options. for example like coca-cola they provide up to twenty thousand, right but you have to apply for it and see okay. the application opens from october 31st got it okay Thank you. The and one last question. The other one that I recently shared, I sent a link um, um, in the WhatsApp, right? In the BUDS group. Uh, there is There was another uh, program um, and they're also like, they'll they'll give up to 15,000. 15, so there are options um, and scholarships. So also there are so many scholarship programs out there, but it's, it's just that like, you just have to constantly, they'll ask you to write the essay 
you just have to write those ones and and then like submit it some most of them like uh, are like valid uh, scholarships like for example like aut autistic right like or some other things that are out there so the i mean or the girls leadership program like there are so many of uh, of them out there like i can I, I even like purchased a book on that one, but it's up to the student. Like, so you just have to keep up with like that uh, writing the essays and also your course load. So you can you can apply and I mean and and try try it out. There are a lot more available. Got it. Okay, thank you. And, and one last question. <clears throat> I think Suresh Kaur said initially like uh, we can pay the fees like or like kind of a block the seat future like after 10 years i'm going to go to that particular university yeah. so i can start paying now with something so then i have a question there like uh, what if like suppose um i'm I'm, I'm buying a seat in tufts now okay. and tomorrow like after 10 years i thought like my kid is not interested in that university and if he's going he's planning for different university so whatever i paid is gone or like i'm going to get the money back Oh, no, no, no. It, it's it's not gone in there. So that is one of the uh, disadvantages of buying in advance. So they will pay the average the tuition cost that it would cost in that state. Let's say, for example, if I buy the Texas Promise Fund uh, now, but my kid want to go, go to Flo California or Florida, for example, right? So okay. they evaluate what is the average, co average cost, not the highest cost, the lowest cost, average cost of the tuition in the Texas and they pay only that much. Oh, okay. And then if you're not interested at all, uh, they will refund only the money that we paid 10 years ago. No. Okay, okay. Got that it. is a disadvantage of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we will try to cover like few more questions. Like so my daughter takes a two year uh, dental assistant program for her junior and senior senior year at a career school. Uh, through her public school. At the end of her senior year, she will receive a license to legally work as a dental assistant by the dentist side. I was wondering whether this would be beneficial in getting any scholarships. So, so if I understand the question right, uh, so she studied 11th and 12th grade in the... Uh, would you repeat the question? Yeah, so she's yeah, so doing she, some we, dental assistant program right now. Uh -huh. And okay. she would get a license, I mean, like during her like junior and senior, and she would get a license to work at a dentist office. Okay. Um, so can that be beneficial in any way to get the scholarships is what he, what he was asking. <laughs> so I would, I would, what I would say, somebody has to move. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They, she may be eligible to get the merit based dental because uh, she's so exceptional. Um, but need based, probably it won't um, work. So, so Chinta Garu, sorry, Andy, like I muted uh, muted you because it was, uh, uh, I mean, like we are hearing an echo. Uh, you can unmute when you want to ask the question, but let me. Let me, uh, like what, from my standpoint, what I thought was, yes, it's definitely a good thing that you can furnish this application, uh, furnish these details on the college application, right? Saying that uh, you did this or like I have completed, I got this, uh, um, I got this one. So uh, the college that she's applying, if they have a merit-based merit scholarship, it, she will definitely like uh, considered or in the sense like the college would consider this mm -hmm. uh, this uh, um, I mean like the achievement right that she had yeah. uh, on that college application it definitely would be looked at uh, in order to make that decision right whether she would get it or not like it's up to that college and like all the other applications that they have received and all the funds that they have um, okay. but uh, but she can like even like if she is a dental assistant like and and if she can make again like this is the same thing that I was saying right if she starts earning uh, money like enough money to support herself like as and and not be claimed as a dependent uh, on 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 you on the parents then then like she can as well apply for the federal uh, federal aid too. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, Andy. And one more thing, Andy, Suresh, 
ఇంతకు ముందు వాట్ నాట్ టు బి ఇంక్లూడెడ్ అని ఒక షీట్ పెట్టారు కదా సో లైక్ ఇప్పుడు లైక్ ఇయర్ అప్లై చేస్తున్నాం అండి లైక్ సపోజ్ లైక్ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్స్ లైక్ సో హౌ డస్ దట్ కన్సిడర్డ్ అండి లైక్ ఐ నో ఫోర్ వన్ కే నాట్ టు బి ఇంక్లూడెడ్ ఐఆర్ఏ అండ్ ప్రైమరీ హోమ్స్ అండ్ క్యాష్ వాల్యూ లైఫ్ పాలసీస్ లైక్ అవి ఇంక్లూడ్ చేయవసరం లేదు అన్నారు కదా హౌ అబౌట్ ది ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్స్ అండి అదే అండి అయితే యాక్చువల్లీ మీ వీ ఆన్సర్ దట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఫ్యూ మినిట్స్ అగో అంటే ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్ ఏంటంటే అండి సో వెన్ యు ఆర్ వెన్ యూ షో ద ట్యాక్సెస్ ఫర్ దట్ హౌస్ ఇన్ ద ప్రయర్ ట్యాక్స్ రిటర్న్స్ ఇట్స్ బేసికలీ హానర్స్ హానర్ సిస్టమ్ అండి వాట్ ఎవర్ యూ ఇంక్లూడ్ ఇన్ ద ఫాస్ ఫార్ ఫార్మ్ ఇస్ అనర్ సో ఇట్స్ ఓకే ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ అండి సురేష్ గారు థ్యాంక్ యూ అండి uh yes like so there is another question from venkat garu uh it's my daughter is in second second year undergrad but i missed to update fafsa is it mandatory to update every year even though we are not eligible for any aid or loans the the main point here venkat garu is like as as like based on suresh garu's experience he would say yes because like he never thought that he would be eligible for any of those ones but he went and like submitted the applications um uh, and to his surprise like he was able to he was able to uh, get some interest free loans right okay. so he and he used it so so that i think like the lesson learned from like what we are hearing here is like just go ahead and submit the application whether you qualify let 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 the government decide that one okay exactly it only takes an hour to submit so and then you learn a lot of things <laughs> while filling that application also so i would strongly suggest to apply and 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 the, the yeah you have to apply every year and not just the first year hope that answers your question uh, i think like the last two questions we'll just take this uh, before we end the call as a parent like what is the support system i can provide my kids to get merit or non merit based scholarship merit based scholarship it depends on the colleges that uh, the student would be applying and uh, they have their selection criteria and uh, so that means like their selection criteria is mainly based on like the course load like how you challenge the how the student challenge themselves like during the school school year right or the during the high school year so they look at all all those factors like what they have contributed like how much they have achieved so all of those so you i mean like in terms of support like uh, not just for the merit scholarship like in in getting into the top colleges it it would be the same thing right you guide them in the proper channels so that like they can challenge like uh, they can challenge like uh, or challenge themselves during the high school so if their course load is like it's maximized to the course course offerings that they have at that particular uh, school board that is what like they would try to look at non merit based scholarships is 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 like all all of these that we are like looking at right yeah the need based yeah, yeah need based is we just went over all all that uh, during those we can try we just have to submit these applications and see like whether we will be qualified for any of them um and one more question from hari garu uh, do we get any tax benefits if we pay from out of pocket um, so i'm thinking that like you are asking like the pay out of pocket is like the college education fees from paying uh, from our pocket yeah i can, i can answer that question yeah. right? so uh, when we file the tax returns and there is uh, two credits uh, that are available so one is a, a lifetime credit and then um, there is another educational credit and so you can you can get the credit um, when you filing for the uh, during the tax rate so you can lifetime a, opportunity oh, credit that's correct that's correct yeah you even i got that credit 
Yeah, there are two two credits. Like on the tax returns, you need to enter that one. Uh, so one is the lifetime opportunity credit, and the other one is the American opportunity credit. Um, so I I think like you probably would get like around two thousand five hundred uh, or so. Like uh, correct, and it's two thousand one of that. Yeah, uh, and also the good thing is that is a credit, so it's not a deduction, right? So which means you, let's say if you um, go $4,000 on the taxes that year, you need to pay only 1500. So um, credits is always much better than the deductions. So to extend this question, say if it is a credit, it doesn't, is it matter whether you pay out of the pocket or not? Oh yeah, no, correct. Yeah. You don't need to pay, correct. In, in yeah, the... because if it is a credit, then it's say, it's a dependent credit kind of thing. Like uh, you spend money or not, you will get it, right? Correct, correct. Thank you. Yeah, if you, you need to claim that student as your dependent. And again, like, so you, I, um, that the American Opportunity Credit is what we usually go with for the undergrads, right? For the first years of post-secondary education. Lifetime learning credit is like, you can do it anytime. Like, so if you, if you happen to go to a school like uh, like later, you can still level it. Uh, lifetime learning credit is like lesser than the American Opportunity Credit. Like that is what I remember. Um, so so during the four years, like so you can apply that. Like they will give you a form. I think like it's ten ninety eight T or so. Mm -hmm. You would get the form from the school and. Uh, you can if you are filing it on your own like you need to have those details as well but if you are working with a cpa like do make sure that you show that 1090 1098 t form uh, where like they would tell you like or, or like how much how much uh, tuition that the student paid right so based on that like you'll be qualified for that credit there is an income fa income factor too for you to be eligible for that so or income limit too. So you just have to look at all, all of those, but the, the college would give you that 1098 form. 1098T form actually. So I think like that's all uh, we have. Uh, um, and if you have any questions, please stay, at, uh, please stay part uh, I mean like stay active in our WhatsApp group or like the other Discord groups. Uh, so that like we are uh, so that like we can answer those questions um, as long as we have we have these like the discussions that's how like we will learn and grow so so please come forward and and stay active uh, participate in uh, participate in these groups uh, so that like everybody would get benefited mm -hmm. and Suresh Garu thank you so much for your for this wonderful session like each one is like you explained it like in much detail so really appreciate this Oh, you're most welcome, and it's my pleasure. So before we conclude, Andy, I I, I, I forgot to, uh, this is nothing to do with the scholarship or anything, but I just want to share what I learned uh, that I did not know when I was, uh, my older one went to college, right? Mm -hmm. So every college needs, uh, we need to show some volunteer hours. So, uh, and then one of the um, big achievement the kids can do is get a presidential um, a lifetime achievement award, right? So this one, this is a website. I also posted that in the chat and I'll post in the words group also. So uh, in the, check in the, your local area and who participates in this program. Like in Dallas, uh, there's a Perot Museum. Um, so uh, there, my son participated and he, uh, he did a, over 100 hours in that year. And then he got a presidential award, right? I mean, it, it, it adds a lot of value to the resume when you apply for college. And also they give beautiful certificate uh, signed by the current president. They give the pin. So um, anybody has any questions on this, I'll be happy to um, answer. Yeah, yes, Suresh Karu. Like I'll definitely watch for it. My daughter got this one. Uh, this is this is like the best option. Like the and it's like presentable option, right? Like when exactly. when you when you have this option like uh, on your resume, it's it stands out. 
or like the college application essay, it stands out. So there are three levels, like the bronze, silver, and gold, like the number of hours that you reach, I mean, you need to work uh, in a particular year would, would get you these ones. Um, and I, actually, this is what I've been like trying, like I've been like trying, working with, uh, I mean, I've been like working or like uh, I have reached out to Venkat Arubandigaru to see like how we can get this one. So it's like only organizations who are, who participate or like who has to be, like who has to um, sign up or register in this, right. in this one. So I, I mean, like I've been like working with like Venkat Garu to see if he can get the Atmiya registered here. Uh, so if, if so, then like the students who would be working or like would uh, would be volunteering for this uh, sessions or any of those can also be like getting that uh, volunteer hours, which could be counted towards this. So this is this is like one of the things that I'm like closely doing it because I have seen an advantage for my for my daughter and I I, I wanted that to be available made available to our community members too. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful time we had today. <laughs> yes, I know this is this is definitely a good one, and we we will be the recording will be shared. Um, I I think like Shashank Garu or somebody from the team will be sharing the recording. Please do share with all our community. Last folks. Last person. This is for college students and high school students. College students. Okay, uh, they are already in the college. They can start working on this one. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, sorry, sorry, no, sorry. No, no. You are asking for the presidential services. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, it is for the high school students. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain to everything that uh, kids do from ninth grade counts towards the uh, resume and matter. So uh -huh. if they do anything before eighth grade, it's it's definitely it's a good thing to do. But whatever they do from ninth grade, it counts. So, uh, and also these, these awards, right? Uh, there is a, like uh, Sonigar said, there is a different, different levels. So uh, if, uh, for 16 year old, if you just do hundred hours, you can get a award. But uh, if you wait like a 17 but years. Year and year hours are the four years. No, each year, every, well, you have to get those number of hours in a particular year. Yeah. So, in, yeah. so, so how, how like the, I mean, like I did this uh, kind of presentation too, as part of the career plan that Ram Krishnagaru did uh, in the month of March or April. So what I would advise you is like, or if your kid is like, it's just getting ready to go to the high school or in the ninth or 10th grade, um, the course load would be much less during that year, like the during the ninth grade and uh, yeah. 10th grade when compared to the 11th grade. So just go for this one in that year for the ninth grade, especially I would say like anybody who is in the eighth grade right now, like I, uh, students in the eighth grade, like I would want them to start looking at these options. So only like a, you have to work for an organization who is registered they go through this this one go they go through the they'll review those organizations and and then they grant this uh, uh they grant this right so only oh. you have to work for those organizations and and for that year like if you have achieved, achieved 75 or received 75 hours volunteer one you would get a bronze so anywhere where kada anywhere anywhere any organization right no, no, no. Okay. You have to look for the organizations that have registered under this this one. Oh, okay. Not every organization is eligible. Like not every organization, ours at every organization will be eligible. So you need to you need to check with them with the organization okay. if they are participating in this. So okay. is there a way to get a list of uh, these organizations, Andy? Uh, basically, if local communities or you know. Yeah, so please go to that website and the presidential service. Yeah, just them, just them. Yeah. So if you see, like on the screen, like if you see certifying organizations may choose, uh, right? Like, so like if, like only, like only certain organizations. So that, that is what I was saying that, like, I want Atmiya to be registered too, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, 
Yeah, that way, like our team, like our members, like or the students, like from our community who works towards this, uh, the services, they, oh, yeah. they will be eligible. So that is what I'm trying to pursue. Um, like hopefully, like we'll see, like how far we we can get to that. What is the benefit, Andy? What is the benefit you said? Benefit is like so. This is a presidential award, so you would get a letter from the president. Basically, president oh. Kevin, like in the sense like. Oh, look, a resume looks good. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. This is a presidential recognition, okay. so you would get like a, as he was saying, like you would get a pin, like the see, like the president's lifetime achievement award. So you would get a pin from the president, like you would get a letter from the president, like uh, and, um, and 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 then like you get a medal also from the president. So it's it's like it looks so good, like if you um, uh, specify it on your resume. Yeah, so I just want to show the one that my son got. Andy. So it will be like from the presidential. Um, you're able to see my screen? Yes, now? yes. So it, it is very valuable, Andy. So this is the pin they get. And also uh, it's on the um, presidential um, letterhead. Logo? Yeah. yeah, logo. And then there is another certificate uh, where the, the president signs. I mean, it gives so much confidence. And, um, and also you're giving back to the society, right? So it's, it, it looks like more, I mean, like for the other organizations that you have been working, right? You don't have to prove uh, to the admission officer that like, that like, or in the sense, like this just gives away, right? Like in the sense, like when you have this one, automatically the, they know that this is a certified organization or this is a registered organization that they have worked and, and this eligibility of the number of hours that you work, it automatically proves. Uh, where do find where do we find that organization in Pondi? Can we find it in the same website, or do we need to search by our own? Andy? You can try looking in that website, but I'll try to do some homework, like because like many parents are doing it. Like so, we'll uh, uh, I mean, um, in the sense like the birth team will do some homework and 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 see like how how the parents can easily get to this. Yeah, yeah. So if you are, happen to be in the Dallas area, Andy. Ferret Museum is one of those. Um, so if anybody needs any help on applying, I mean, there's an application criteria and stuff like that. I'll be happy to share. Um, okay. Yeah, if anyone in the call from the North Carolina Rally side, please let me know and I can tell you. Okay. Yeah, if there is anybody in from Georgia, I can... Uh, tell the details. Like my son is doing, and I did also volunteer work for that organization. Uh, and maybe like uh, Sony Garu, like you know, uh, if you are doing this activity for RPI registered, if you are doing it the next month, I can, I can help you guys. I, sure. I mean, I can do some yeah. time. So, I mean, I know we are covering for the students, but like, it's not just for the students, it's for anybody, right? Like even, even like the adults, I uh, have seen like uh, some of the adults, like who really did like a lot of work and, and like maybe pro did like 200 hours and, and got the gold, uh, the gold pin from, from um, under this organization or under this presidential service. It's, I mean, it's just up to you, right? Like all the work that you have done, like you had a recognition from the president. Uh, yeah. So it's just not only for the kids, like the parents can do it too. But if the kids did it, like during the high school year, it would, it's 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 uh, something like uh, valuable that you can add to the school prof um, the college application profile. <laughs> Uh, sorry, do we have any, um, uh, do, you, uh, do anyone knows the uh, procedure, like how to register our organization with um, this institute? Andy? Well, I have uh, my Dixuchi, like I have a foundation which is registered here. So yeah, even I can go for it. And you know, so that may help for, help for our kids. So Ranjit Gar, you are saying that you already have an organization who which is registered? No, no, no. Just I I, I want to know. You want oh, you want to know. Okay. 
No, uh, I, I mean, like, I know, like, my, uh, my daughter, uh, my daughter did this one, and she got the bronze award, and she, that was, like, during the COVID time that she got the bronze award, and she, she specified it, so it added more value to her resume, too, because, like, during the COVID hour, COVID time, she volunteered, and she gained these hours, right, so that also added uh, value. Uh, but then the organization that she worked with, like, so I, I, it was, it was not a big organization or a known organization, like how, how like uh, Suresh Garu is presenting, right? So just like a small organization um, managed by Asians and, and like they were able to register that organization under this, um, uh, I mean, like got that registration under this one, right? Like under the personal service awards recognition. So, so that made me think that like, yes, like we should do it for Atmiya too. Uh, and Ranjit Garu, like maybe we both can work uh, because you are part of my team. We, we both can work and figure out like the, all the options and get the Atmiya and Dikshu, uh, Dikshuji also get registered. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. I think like I'll, uh, I'll try to end the call for today. Um, but again, like the, the group is there at, um, please participate and stay active. We are here, like we, we wanted to support like each other, right? Uh, so please participate in, in those in those groups and also like take advantage of these sessions that we are putting together. Yeah, Manakosum Manam. Definitely. Call and just okay, question. Sure. So basically, like um, the IB colleges versus uh, the public colleges, how it matters and at the end of the day, some people say it, it doesn't matter that much. Some people say it matters that much. Say, for example, like as I said previously, like public school, the fee is less, but the private big school is more. Is it kind of... Sure. Uh, so, I mean, like there are two ways of answering your question, Andy. So there, there are uh, you can look at it in this way. If 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 it's a diamond, diamond is a diamond anywhere, right? So th that means like if the student is is really well and self motivated and like uh, and and uh, has that self confidence to work on themselves and has the like right skill set, right? So they they will shine anywhere. They don't have to go to the top Ivy leagues. Like we have seen, we have seen like many, um, many students who became like leaders, right? They probably came from like, uh, like uh, I would say um, Obama, right? Like the President Obama, Michelle Obama, they didn't go to a great schools, but they look how they ended up, right? Like, or where they ended up now. So there are those factors. Uh, IV leaks going to the IV leaks is like usually like yeah what I have what I understood was like yes like they have um, good resources their network is strong like the top colleges right their network is strong they they will because they get like good funds and uh, and and then like the connections basically like when getting placed after after you come out of that and it and the the instructors there like the professors there they they have like a lot of experience too they gained a lot of experience um so there would be a quality that you can see a quality of education there um but but again like it all depends on a particular student situation is what i would say yeah yeah definitely the connections goes long way and that network it goes long way the alumni yeah the connections are like so that it's like somebody just mentioned Akila aim so that is true like ivy colleges are better for building relationships a lot of wealth and influential people it's it's just not that one right like even the professors like are are uh, i mean like my daughter says it like the professors are super brains that's how she put it <laughs> to me so there are there are those valuable lessons um, another one, like I would give you another example is that like um, one of our, uh, one of the student uh, from our community. For she, Italian collection, best actor in a... 
Yeah, one of one of our uh, community member student, um, she she did her undergrad at uh, UC Berkeley, and she actually worked under uh, she actually worked at a um, lab who was led by the professor um, like that got a Nobel Prize Nobel Prize. I mean, like you won't get such opportunities, right? Um, so so her mentor was like a Nobel Prize winner. That is, you you would see, you would see, like you would see a difference too in, in these, uh, I mean, like if you're working at these colleges. Thanks, you amazing. Yeah. So when, when like my husband was working at the Johns Hopkins um, University, like that year, like I remember that year, 2003, uh, there's, there's a professor who got like a Nobel Prize, like that's Johns Hopkins is also a like top university, right? There was a professor who got like the, uh, who got like the Nobel Prize winner um, in the science field. And, and, and he said that like he would be doing a presentation. This is like the pre-presentation. So that was the presentation that he would be doing at the, um, I mean, like at the, actually in the, um, when he would be getting his um, award, right? So we were like, we were asked or like it was open for all the Johns Hopkins employees. Uh, I think it was open for everybody uh, to join and attend that seminar. It was amazing like to be there, like to sit there, right? And hear the Nobel Prize winner uh, giving, giving the seminar like, um, on on the topic that they on 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 the research that they have done so it would it, it's like it would be so inspiring like to to be there and participate uh, in such uh, presentations or sessions or to be within that uh, group actually so do undergraduates will get that kind of an opportunity to work that at, at that high level researchers or only graduates will be allowed no, Post you, uh, you you can get like uh, you never know who is going to get the Nobel Prize winner, right? Who is going to get like the Nobel Prize award? So anybody like all these professors, like uh, as as I was saying, like my daughter said, like termed it as like super great. So you never know which professor would be going to get right. So you probably might have started like or your student might have started at a lab. Mm -hmm. It, it could be just like a regular, like any other professor at that university. But the, the work that they are doing, if they made a significant contribution, uh, which would, I mean, which would gain this award, like for them or uh, receive this, be a recipient of this uh, Nobel Prize, that's, that's, that's when like you would, you would get this, you would understand like where you are working, right? So, but, but yes, like there are, there are uh, these, if, if you look at like the uh, professor's profile, you can, you can get to know how advanced that they are doing, how advanced research that they are doing. So based on that, the student can join certain, they can get to choose those labs and reach out, right? If, if, if the, if the professor is fine, like is accepting, then you just go and work with them. Um, I had a quick question about the PVSA awards. Sure. Um, so I'm a senior and so I want to do early application. And so for the PVSA awards, how long would the whole process take? Because I went to a um, like a public like recreation center and I did like I volunteered as like a counselor in training for like eight weeks in the summer and I did 172 hours. And so if I were to submit that, like as an application for the PVSA award, how long would the whole process take and would I be able to get it in time to submit for applications? So at this point, like without any hesitation, just go ahead and submit it. If you got it on time, you put that on, the, on your application. But I honestly, I don't remember and it all depends because like my daughter, when she applied, it took like, um, it could have taken longer because of the COVID year. So Resh Garu, mm -hmm. maybe I don't know. Uh, I mean, if your son recently got that one, probably you can help answering that question to see like how long it might have taken for, for your son to get that. Um, so for my son, he did it in 2019, Andy. So when he was in um, uh, eighth grade summer, um, 
Me uh, too. Yeah, that's when I did it. Okay, so then that basically that the organization that you helped, uh, if it's part of the presidential award, actually you should have gotten by now. Uh, actually, recently my kid got it, Andy, just a month ago. Yeah. For him, it took uh, I think uh, around three weeks. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. But in your yeah. case, in your case, because you are a senior and you have that opportunity, if you have that opportunity, right? I would just say, don't worry about the time. Uh, if you get it like, if you get it like early by before January, well and good, right? Like, don't don't wait. Just submit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then. No, no, no. My question is, can she be able to submit or that organization must be sub submitting? So the organization should be submitting. That. Yeah. The, I know, like you need to find whether your organization is part of that, uh, that, I mean, eligible to apply for that and they need to apply it for you. Uh -huh. okay. I saw on the website that you can like, you can, um, register to be a certifying organization and so would i have to get them to register in order to be a certifying organization oh it won't they have to be as uh, they have to be registered already not yeah. they can't okay. do it now process, or right? if they can still do it now if, uh, to benefit like the all the students that who are who are doing the working there right but your hours may not count if they if they are not uh, participating. Okay. All right. Thank you. Small confusion, and organization register you under lanthi dappa. Manan apply jaise kada. Adi ma ma mai vishyam lo organization ante organization nolle coordinate jaise saru. Um, and I I went with it, right? Because like Mali Manam additional work chase koni correct chase koni applications are apply jay sama leda ani choose ko kar leda dandi. But if you want the red cross away, wallo hours star and certificate star. But how many mano? Man, chase ko le mandi. I don't think we can do our. I don't think we can do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Organization. Okay. They'll review it, like a particular organization will review it and, and then they have to uh, approve it too, right? Like okay. whether we truly, uh, truly uh, did those number of hours. And then the organization yeah. went in and applied or like um, when they are applying for all their students, they did apply. Uh, they'll include your student too. Yeah, basically, while registry like a register test to turn them on our sunny, so they have their own system where they will they will be registering. And once you cross the 100 hours or 250 hours, uh, if you can, most of those organizations will automatically apply for it. Oh, okay, Good so they, they, your data must be registered. Say, for example, if I tell that I work for 10 hours. Even though I work, but if that uh, information is not available or accurately registered in their application, they cannot apply. And the either case, and the sometimes organizations will apply. Sometimes we can apply ourselves by, by getting these timesheets and the hours man edit all approaches. It's chair or organization self submit chess coach. Two ways are there. Market case lay market case lay me in the end. What do a voluntary organization work chess? Edu Akinich hours approve in Tarath Walu approval hours. The organization details the chicken will self apply. Yes, can you do that? Put radanti self basically first email and first validation in Tarvata first email us in the end. There's the they are eligible for the presidential. You are you are good, and after that, the time of the day. Other other I think hardly for him it took uh, two weeks on Kunta and approximately. Uh okay. hard copy from Bis then the Suresh photo chubin jerk, a clip pocket, a certificate hard copies from Mitch that may take that may take another couple of weeks. But uh apply chair and key email confirmation, I hope that should be fine. Correct. You're right. Correct, correct. Exactly. That's the process. And he recently said, I was weeks before he said. Oh, that's good to know, Andy. I always thought that. Good to know, Andy. Why did he say that in December? Oh, okay, okay, okay. He finished around 110 hours, something like that. Recently, but when we asked, they said, like, 
we will give it in december ante avasaram le ante manasa alante ipudu avars mana endi man self ga chesukochu vaallu anyway they will validate adanku team untundi separate ga man submit either vaallu employ vaadu specific organization chesina student chesina they will validate against to the registration and what kind of organization is it and all those stuff ma vaani the avars mana endi vaallu avars isthe man apply chesukochu same thing వాళ్ళు అప్లై చేశారు అనుకోండి ఇట్ వుడ్ బి లైక్ ఈజియర్ లైక్ అంటే బికాస్ ఇట్ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద సోర్స్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ కాబట్టి ద ప్రాసెస్ కుడ్ మూవ్ ఫాస్టర్ అని అనుకుంటున్నాను నేను ఇట్స్ జస్ట్ మై ఎగ్జామ్షన్ బట్ మనం అప్లై చేస్తే మళ్ళీ మనం అప్లై చేసిన దాంట్లో అప్రూవల్ ఉందా లేదా సిగ్నేచర్ ఆథరైజ్ సిగ్నేచర్స్ ఉన్నాయా లేదా అని కూడా వెరిఫై చేసుకోవాలి వాళ్ళు అవునండి అంతే అది ఈజీ ప్రాసెస్ అనుకుంటాను అండి వాళ్ళు అంటే కలెక్టివ్ గా వాళ్ళు ట్వంటీ సర్టిఫికేట్స్ పెడితే దట్ విల్ టేక్ అగైన్ బిగ్ క్యూ రైట్ అదర్వైజ్ లైక్ మీరు తెచ్చుకుని సబ్మిట్ చేసిన అండ్ ఆఫ్ ది డే వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి యాజ్ అప్లికెంట్ గానే వెళ్తుంది అది అది నా అంటే నేనే నేను ఎగ్జాంపుల్ మా ఇంట్లో ఎగ్జాంపుల్ తీసుకుంటే నేను కోవిడ్ టైంలో వాలంటీర్ గా యోగా క్లాస్ అవి చెప్పి నాకు తెలియకుండా ఈ ప్రెషన్ సర్టిఫికేట్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ అప్లై చేశారు వాళ్ళు వాళ్ళు అప్లై చేస్తే వన్ డే ఇట్ బికమ్ ఏ సర్ప్రైజ్ నాకు వచ్చింది అది మొత్తం వాళ్ళు ఇది ఆ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఏంటంటే వాళ్ళు ప్రాసెస్ చేశారు నాది అంతా అసలు నన్ను అడిగారు శ్రీని ఇలా మీకు అప్లై చేస్తాం మీ అవర్స్ వస్తున్నాయి అంటే ఎస్ అని చెప్పగానే అప్లై చేశారు అనమాట అది వన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అండి మా వాడు మా అబ్బాయి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఏంటంటే వీడియో వర్క్ చేసుకొని సమ్మర్ హాలిడేస్ లో మొత్తం హండ్రెడ్ అవర్స్ వర్క్ చేసుకున్నారు వీడు వాడు ఫ్రెండ్ వెళ్ళి అవర్స్ తెచ్చుకుని వీడు సెల్ఫ్ గా అప్లై చేసుకున్నారు అదండి <laughs> Um, thank, thank you all like i may have to end the session uh, worship like if you want more information please do reach out to me okay thank you thank you, thank you all appreciate your help yeah bye bye thank you all yeah